Uh, welcome to the video for tutorial number five uh, for Poly 399. If possible, I would recommend that you watch the lecture videos first uh, because there's going to be information in those lecture videos that will make this tutorial easier. Uh, that said, I can talk you through uh, the basics without a lot of information. Uh, like, I won't add to the information that's in the lecture videos, but anyway. Yeah, watch the lecture videos first if you can. So for tutorial number five, what you're going to do is you're going to want to go to the tutorial content and here we are, the weekly content. Um, here you are. You can see tutorial five is that you've got to get the assignment sheet here and then you're going to want to answer questions on D2L. So this is where you're going to want to get the lesson plan. Uh, for tutorial number five. I've got uh, it up here all ready to go. So one of the things that's going to become really clear is it's going to tell you how to build and interpret a cross tab. I go through the basics of this in the lecture and that's why you're going to want to watch those lecture videos uh, either alongside with or before this. What I'm going to do for here is I'm going to show you enough to get through the first part of this. And so basically what I'm getting you to do is to test uh, for covariation across uh, two hypotheses. One is looking at the relationship between gender and ideology, uh, and one is looking at the relationship between age and ideology. Now, because some of you are going to want to be doing this for your research reports or using these variables for your research reports, using something like the 2019 uh, Canadian election study, I'm going to run this with the 2011 Canadian election study, just so that you can see what it looks like, but then also uh, not end up plagiarizing tutorial for your own research reports. So, uh, of course, once you have all of this downloaded, you will head to assignments, quizzes, and then you would access tutorial assignment number five over there. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Stata, and what I've got here is I've actually got my do file for uh, tutorial number four. So you know how for tutorial number four you had to build the um, uh, the data set for, uh, or you had to build a do file to measure political knowledge, uh, and you're using again the 2011 election study. So part one was building the do file uh, just for the political knowledge variable, and then part two is actually doing a bunch of other things, and there's my new file for this. Because I know that I need to use the 2011 election study for uh, tutorial number five, I'm going to go to my do file where I know I have the pathway for this, um, uh, for the data set, and I'm just going to copy the pathway, and I'm going to start a new do file here, and there we go. CES 2011, and I open up the data set, and there it is. So, uh, this is a way to make getting the data fast. I've had a few students say, oh, I can't find the 2011 data on D2L. And the point is, you should at this point, because you've used it, like, for the past two weeks, already have it on your computer and, like, use the do file for the purpose for which the do file was intended, which is to make accessing this stuff fast. Okay, so the assignment asks you to find the ideology variable, um, which is... Uh, MBS 11 underscore uh, K5. And so I'm going to do a quick cross tab of this. You can see what the variable looks like. It's got this left blank, which is my missing data for this one. And then it's got left and right. Left I know is zero, 10 I know is right, but I don't know what that left blank is. And so I'm going to run it again without a label to see what number that is. I have to take care of these people. If they if somebody left this question blank, it's the mailback survey, so they would have actually answered it on a physical piece of paper. These are my missing data, so I need to get rid of them. They're not useful for the analysis, so they need to be excluded. And so what I've done is I've made a new ideology variable, and I guess said make a new variable called ideology out of this old one called MBS11 underscore K5. Recode it so that negative 99 is missing, 0 through 4 is 1, 5 is 2, that's the middle, uh, and 6 through 10 is 3. If you look at the distribution of this, even with the like 5% that left it blank, like just look at how big this middle category is. On its own, it's almost a third of the data. And so these distributions matter, right? We've talked about this in terms of central tendency and things like that. Uh, so... 
gen ideology is this. I'm just going to run a quick histogram uh, so that you can see uh, what... Um, oh, here, let me do it this way. Recode ideology negative 99 equals missing. So I'm going to do that, and I just want to show you what the distribution looks like before I recode it into three categories. Look, this is pretty close to a normal distribution, right? So this is that zero to 10 ideology measure in 2011. Look at how it peaks at the middle. And then you can see that you've got like this nice, like uh, kind of even fall off onto the left and a little bit less even on the right, but it's still like, it looks close to a normal distribution, right? Uh, this has changed over time, so like it doesn't look like this in 2019 the way that it did in 2011, but still, nice distribution there. Okay. Um, what I ran there was just a histogram, and the state of code for it is histogram or HISD. Anyway, that's not the point of what you need for the cross tab. Uh, what you need is to make an ideology variable out of three categories. And so this is what I've done. The codes are there, so I've taken care of the missing data, collapsed the left into one, the middle stays on its own, collapsed the right into another one. I've labeled the values, and so this is what I get. I get this ideology variable. I've got about 33, 34% of people on the left, about 33% of people in the middle, just in that one category, and about 33% of people on the right. So super even distributions, right? The assignment sheet uh, proses the hypothesis looking at gender and ideology. So this is the idea that women are more likely to identify with the political left than are men. Uh, there's a number of rationales for this. Um, we've got a, we know we have a gender gap in vote choice. So women are more likely to support parties of the left, um, while men are more likely to support parties of the right. One reason why could be that women are just actually ideologically to the left of men. Um, we see similar sorts of gender gaps in prioritization of issues. Women are more likely to care about issues like the welfare state, health care, like policies along those lines in Canada. Men are much more likely to say tax cuts are important to them. And so, again, this is kind of informing this idea that uh, this might be driven by ideology. The idea that women, like first right out of the gate, are more likely to identify on the political left while men are more likely to identify on the political right. Uh, you can come up with a number of rationales for it. If you were writing your research report on this, say, uh, you would need a nice full rationale for it. For um, us, I just want you to know that that's the hypothesis. Women are more likely to identify with the political left than men. Uh, and so how do we go about actually seeing if we've got co-variation? So remember how we have to figure out if we're building a cross tab. Uh, we need to see if the independent variable and the dependent variable co-vary. This is step one. And then we would need to see if they co-vary in a manner that's consistent with the hypothesis. That's step two. Uh, how big the co-variation is. That's step three. And then we want to come in with step four to see if it's statistically significant. So what we need to do is figure out how to build the table. So I need to look for my gender variable. I know it's our gender. Uh, when I tab that though, uh, annoyingly, the election study people have hit my survey pet peeve, which is using biological labels um, while they say that they're doing gender, uh, which is annoying. Uh, so I will make a new gender variable um, where I've got actual gender labels associated with this. Uh, and so you can see what I've done is I've reordered it as well because the hypothesis is comparing women to men. So I want women to be like uh, first in the table, and I'm going to be comparing them to men. And so that's why I've done the ordering the way that I have. Okay, now comes the syntax for how do I build a cross tab in Stata. And so if you don't know what a cross tab is, you're going to need to go to the lecture <laughs> videos to see what a cross tab is. Uh, basically, a cross tabulation is where we put two variables together into a table uh, so that we can see how they co vary, so we can see how the variables move together. You already know the syntax for this. If you're just doing a tabulation of a single variable, this gets you a frequency distribution. But if you do a tabulation of two variables, this gets you a cross tab. And so you might be thinking, okay, so I'm going to build a cross tab. Just look at the syntax here. How do I do this? Maybe the format should be tab, the independent variable, the dependent variable, and that will give me the table that I need, right? No. And so if you have looked at the 
lecture video. And if you looked at some of the readings on D2L as well, one of the things that we show really clearly in the template is that you need the independent variable in the column. So the independent variable needs to be in column. And this is why this particular format is not correct, because I have my dependent variable in the column and my independent variable in the row. So this is set up backwards. I need to set it up differently. And so this is why um, the format is not tab independent variable, dependent variable. The format that you need to remember to build across tab and Stata is that you tell Stata to make a tabulation, and then the first variable that you should give it goes in the row. The second variable goes in the column. This is kind of like saying tab DB IV. That's how you talk to the computer for this one. Tab the row, then the column. So tab variable that goes in the row, variable that goes in the column. For you, the format is always tab dependent variable, independent variable. So what happens when I get that? This is what we get. I get women, I get men, and I get a ideology um, left, center, and right. Now, if you've watched the tutorial video, uh, you'll know, or the lecture video rather, uh, you'll know that we're just dealing with nominal data in the lecture video, but this example has an ordinal variable in it. And so what I want to do, we'll talk about this in lecture uh, the, like next week, uh, so after like November 6th. Um, so we're, we're going to get a little bit of lecture on that, so you'll have that reinforced in that context. But here, what you need to know is that um, in order to interpret a, a nominal by ordinal cross tab like this. So my independent variable is nominal, I just have gender categories, but I have this rank order from left to right uh, in my dependent variable. So I've got a nominal by ordinal cross tab. In order for me to interpret what's going on, I need to interpret the top row and then I need to interpret the bottom row. I never interpret the middle because the middle is always a bit of a mess. And so we want to see things moving across the top row and we want to see things moving across the bottom row. Uh, so this will tell us the difference in the, you know, between women and men and identifying on the political left. That's consistent with the hypothesis. But like the inverse of the hypothesis is like, or we could state it differently, men are more likely than women to identify on the political right, right? So we would interpret the top row, we would interpret the bottom row, we would not talk about middle not talk about the middle. Okay. You can also see with this cross tab that it's just counts, like it's just uh, actual frequencies. I, I need percentages, I need those relative frequencies, and I also need chi-square to be able to answer the questions for this. So what's the data syntax for this? It is uh, where I, same thing, so tab ideology gender, in this case, tab my dependent variable, my independent variable, comma. So in state of comma means options that you can add on to any kind of state of command. So this is just tab the uh, dependent variable, independent variable, comma for options. Call means column percentages. Chi means run chi-square. That's it. Okay, so... Uh, if I were to run that like this, I get this. So it tells me that I've got a key, my frequency is column percentages. This looks the way that I want it to look. I've got my 100% totals on the columns there. I've got um, row marginals, this is all great. And then I've got my chi-square, I have my value, and then I've got the p-value. So if you've watched the lecture video, you'll know that you could do this by hand if you wanted to, it's not fun. We don't want to do it by hand. Uh, but if you did by, it by hand, you would do a bunch of calculations that would give you this number. Then you have to consult the gnarly table, and that table gives you the p-value, or you just ask the computer to do it, right? So this is the connection to all of that whole exercise in the lecture video about, um, yeah, about how to do chi-square. I just want to, before I go into interpretation, I just want to show you what it looks like if you make the error and you don't include the comma. So if you've got everything set up, but then you run it like that, uh, it'll say something like variable call not found. This is why Stata needs the comma. It needs the comma for you to tell the computer, um, read this a different way. So I'm gonna give you the command. I want you to make a table 
with these two variables, and then the comma tells the computer, and then I want you to do these other things to those tables. If you don't give it the comma, it's not going to understand that it needs to like change gears and you know uh, figure out the options for the particular table. So if you get this error message, it means that you are like variable not found, like variable not defined, because call is not a variable. What you need to do is it tells you that you're missing the comma. So you need to have the comma in there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get, like it's not going to work. So don't forget the comma. If you do forget the comma, this is what it looks like. If you get this error, go back and put the comma there. Okay, so how do we interpret this? Uh, you read across the left, you read across the right. You look for percentage point gaps. That's what I would look at here. I would compare relative frequency to relative frequency. And for the ease of interpretation, I would round these ballpark. So here I can see I've got ballpark 36% of women agree, uh, identifying on the left compared to ballpark 32% of men. If I'm looking at this one, I've got ballpark 30% of women compared to ballpark 36% of men. Uh, so this is a gap that is consistent with the hypothesis. Women are more likely to identify on the left than are men. There is a bit of a gap there. It's four percentage points. And here I've got a gap that's in the same direction, men being more likely to identify on the right than are women, by about six percentage points. So this is consistent with the hypothesis. Uh, it's not big. Like, if I was doing this for my research report, I would be like, oh, that's like quite small, actually. And then uh, you've got your p-value for chi-square there. Uh, I'm not going to give the answer for this one because one of the things that you need to be doing uh, in the assignment is to be able to interpret what this chi-square means. Uh, I can tell you that it is 0 0.067. Usually the threshold that we require for statistical significance is 0 0.05 or less. We want to be at least 95% confident that we're not making what? A type one error. Okay, so now you know the syntax that you need to be able to run a cross tab and get percentages in the right spot and to also call up chi-square um, as your, uh, yeah, as your measure of um, statistical inference as your ability to like generalize from what you're seeing in the table to the population um, that the, the sample came from in this case can be generalized from what we're seeing in Stata to all of Canadians. You have to answer that in tutorial in the assignment so I'm not going to give you the answer for that one but this is you know what the basics is. Um, if you're looking for like the general idea of like the syntax that you need, it would be tab ID call and then whatever stats you want to call up. So the format, tell the computer to tab your dependent variable, your independent variable, comma, where you want your percentages, in this case in the column, and then uh, whichever statistics you want to call up. So in this case, we want to call up chi-square. All right, off you go. Good luck with the rest of tutorial assignment number five.